Right now, there is a construction boom taking place in one of the most unlikely parts of the world, Antarctica. The coldest, windiest, driest, and somehow wettest continent in the world. It is, without a doubt, the harshest environment known to man. Temperatures can drop to grizzly minus 89 degrees centigrade. Wind speeds can exceed 200 miles per hour. And during winter, parts of the continent can be submerged in six months of darkness. To travel here, to live here, you have to be brave. There's no question about that. And yet, surprisingly, the continent has a population of about 5,000 people in the summer and around 1,000 in the winter. There are actually towns with bars and shops and even little cinemas. There's a life here and it's growing. Construction is reaching an all-time high across the continent right now. These settlements are mostly populated by scientists doing extraordinary work. But that might be about to change. You see, in early 2024, Russian geologists found what looks to be like massive reserves of oil. The reserves uncovered contain around 511 billion barrels worth of oil. That equates to around 10 times the North Sea's entire output over the last 50 years and more than twice that of all of Saudi Arabia. It's a discovery that has put this icy continent on edge. Since 1961, the countries laying claim to Antarctica have peacefully agreed to preserve the land for scientific research. This treaty dictates that no military bases or oil operations can take place here. But that that agreement is set to expire by 2048 and we are already seeing some of those countries attempt to secure their claims through settlements, construction projects and even babies. So are we about to see a scramble for the last continent? Our story begins with the Nazis during World War II. Germany sent expeditions to Antarctica and attempts to establish a secret military base there. As you can imagine, Britain and America soon followed suit. Now, there are a number of colorful conspiracy theories on the internet as to what all these operations were up to. What we do know is that in 1958, America detonated three nuclear weapons in the region. It kind of became obvious that Antarctica could be used as a pawn in the growing Cold War. To prevent this, the 12 countries that lay claim to the continent agreed to a treaty, and it's more more or less stayed the same way ever since, with each country claiming its own little slice. There are seven countries that won a piece of the pie. Argentina, Australia, Chile, France, New Zealand, Norway, and the UK. While America has its own research base. Now it should be noted that while the treaty is recognized internationally, these claims are not and they remain contested. This scene over here you may notice has a few countries laying claim. Argentina, the UK and Chile have all marked this spot as their own. And as these things tend to go, this is where the oil's been discovered. But we'll get to that in a moment. To build everything in Antarctica takes an enormous strength of will. This is an environment that really doesn't want us there. And yet, the architects and engineers who work down here to construct new buildings are busier than ever. For the last few years, the British Antarctic Survey has been undergoing a massive effort to update their existing infrastructure. While you and I might wonder who in their right mind would want to spend 3 to 15 months at a time down here. Antarctica is full of scientists doing just that, and they are achieving some remarkable things. Scientists here are the ones that discovered the hole in the ozone layer. They are continually learning about the rapid effects of climate change. Obviously, Antarctica is like a kind of thermometer for the world, and a lot of the key signs of climate change are witnessed in the Antarctic. And of course, they study the penguins. Walking between the buildings, you'll notice that the Discovery Building replaces all of those with one big, much larger structure. This new design makes the whole 
experience on the station more collaborative. This is the UK's largest research station on Antarctica, including a scientific workshop, a medical center, an operations hub, and even a gym with a climbing wall. However, the Discovery Building did not actually begin its journey in Antarctica. It was first constructed on the other side of the world in the UK. In a place as isolated as Antarctica, there is really no room for error when it comes to construction. If you're missing a piece, you cannot simply run around the corner to your local hardware shop. Every piece of material and equipment has to be painstakingly checked, meticulously packed, and then carefully shipped to Antarctica. So it has quite a challenge to get all of the materials needed to the continent. Planning before going down to the station is crucial and making sure you have everything you need along with the sum spares, it's vital to success. This is why nearly all the buildings in Antarctica are prefabricated. The journey itself is treacherous. To reach Rothra, where the British base is located, ships have to cross the infamous Southern Ocean, most dangerous ocean in the world. This is the only ocean that goes completely around the globe uninterrupted by land, creating a swirling mass of water with winds that can reach up to 70 knots. All of this culminates in the Drake Passage, a narrow body of water between South America's Cape Horn and the South Shetlands Island. Water currents can flow as fast as 150 million cubic meters per second, making it the most voluminous and dangerous current on Earth. Once the ships finally dock at Rotra, workers only have about six months to assemble the building. The research station at Rotra is on an island, and as the winter sets in, sea ice forms around it, blocking any possible passage. The buildings themselves are engineered to withstand the harshest conditions on the planet. Temperatures can plummet with without warning to minus 35 degrees centigrade, and snowfall often exceeds the height of a single story. For example, the Discovery Building's exterior cladding includes thermal brakes and vibration dampers to reduce the effects of extreme weather. The panels fit together with airtight seals to prevent cold air from penetrating the interior. Many Antarctic buildings are divided into zones with sensors to detect occupancy. When rooms are unoccupied, they are winterized reducing or turning off heating to conserve energy. Ventilation systems recover heat from warm outgoing air to help maintain a comfortable environment. During the summer, the Rothra station may have over 160 people on site, but that number drops to around 25 in the winter. This resilience is built into all aspects of Antarctic design. For instance, to fight the wind, the Discovery Buildings is anchored to the ground with 71 heavy-duty anchors. Its orientation on an east-west axis helps to maximize snow scoring by redirecting the strong northeastern winds. These winds are deflected along the building's curved roof, clearing snow away from its sheltered side. The geopolitical tensions are evident, with 11 babies now having been born in Antarctica between Argentina and Chile starting back in 1978. Despite the environmental protocol that bans mining, the upcoming treaty review in 2048 could change the rules. For now, the construction boom is driven by multiple factors, including the need to replace aging infrastructure. Buildings simply do not last as long in such an extreme environment. Additionally, geopolitical interests have led new nations to set up bases alongside the older stations that have been operating for 70 to 80 years. While the Antarctic Treaty focuses on the peaceful scientific collaboration, the underlying geopolitical tensions cannot be ignored. Countries are becoming more cautious as 2048 approaches. Geopolitics has probably always been there. Despite being one of the harshest places on Earth, Antarctica remains a sanctuary for wildlife and a vital center for scientific research. The collaborative spirit among nations is something to admire, with countries supporting each other even in the face of political differences. Will the spirit continue as the world changes? Only time will tell. But one thing is for sure, whoever wins the race to control Antarctica could change the fate of the continent forever. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the growing construction boom in Antarctica, make sure to subscribe to Known Facts for more exploration into fascinating topics from around the world.